Hey guys, this is Professor Abood, still in Cambodia, uh, and we're going to continue talking about Experiment 7. So this one is about substitution reactions, SN1 versus SN2. Um, SN means substitution, nucleophilic attack, and one. we'll talk about what the 1 and 2 means in just a second. So the objective is just essentially to see when the conditions are favorable uh, for either, either SN1 or SN2. So what you guys are going to have to actually do is look through, look carefully through the mechanisms and characteristics of an SN1 and an SN2 reaction. So if if you look through here, it kind of goes over them. Um, you know, it talks about leaving groups. For example, here we have our halogens are uh, better leaving groups when they have a larger radius and form more stable ions. So if we take a look over here, if you remember the larger radius or the smaller radius is to the right and up. So fluorine has smaller than chlorine, chlorine has a smaller radius than bromine, bromine is smaller than iodine. So the better leaving groups are ones with larger radiuses or radii to be technical. Um, so that's, and this is all talking about SN1 reactions. Tertiary um, is more stable than, than a primary and so on and so forth. Um, so a primary or an SN1 mechanism will have a first slow step. And so the first slow step is, is uh, talked about right here. It's essentially when this bromine ion just dissociates um, completely on its own and then leaves this, uh, uh, this unstable, uh, in this case, cation, and your new molecule or element can come in and bond to form a, a, once again a stable a stable compound so once again that's just when the when the molecule leaves on its own and is not really forced out so to speak um, whereas an SN2 reaction is more of when your compound is forced out so here we have RX and that's right here and so here we have a, a H2O coming on and attaching onto it and so the X is kind of shoved out of the way and then just comes off. So that is essentially what a uh, SN1 versus an, or I guess this is not a, uh, this isn't a solvent. So and here's the, here's the SN2 reaction. So your N, NU comes in and bonds to your molecule and therefore forces the X off. So compared to the SN1 where it just kind of leaves on its own, the SN2 you have uh, some element force it out because it's more it's more attracted to that carbon than this X and therefore the NU bonds and then the X leaves. So there are various situations under which SN2s are favorable and SN1s are favorable and it talks about them in length in the manual so please you know read through that. Here it has, uh, you know, it talks about leaving groups as well. So as far as procedure goes, oh, and, and of course it, it shows some reactions. So make sure to just take a, a few minutes to look over this stuff. Um, and it shows order of reactivity, so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to have seven um, halogen compounds that we're going to be used, that we're going to be using. And halogen just means this row right here, uh, number nine. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so on. So these halogens are going to be mixed with uh, under certain conditions. So in the first part of the experiment, you're going to mix them with silver nitrate. So you're going to have seven clean, dry test tubes, and you're going to add one mil of a 0.1 molar solution of ethanolic silver nitrate, and then you're going to add about 10 drops of each of your uh, halides into each one of these test tubes. You're going to mix them up for several seconds, record any precipitates occurring within the first five minutes, and that will, of course, indicate, um, it, well, it'll help you, it'll be one of the pieces of the puzzle to solve, uh, to try to figure out which ones are going to come out first, or, or I guess to give you the, the answers to that, the experimental answers. Um, but you're going to, before you look at the experimental data, you're going to try to predict the order of reactivity of each alkyl halide towards either SN1 or SN2. Um, and then you're going to repeat the procedure under a situation with more favorable for SN2 conditions, and that's going to be with sodium iodide and acetone. 
And like I said, it's just basically the same thing. You've got seven dry test tubes you mix with the solution and then you add your alkyl highlights and try to get precipitate out of them. And if you're not getting precipitate, you heat them up. So hopefully that answers all your questions. And if you guys have any further questions, feel free to contact me. All right, see you in lab.